For use case 10, we are going to revisit cohort analysis which we introduced in part 1 of this series. The next use case is about cohort analysis. Let's start by understanding the term cohort, and what it means is simply a group of people. This definition from AppQs covers good ground of cohort analysis. The key components here are first, it is a type of behavioral analytics, and we use it to track behavior of groups of people because we want to understand their actions. One of the main reasons we do this in business is because we want to reduce churn. Churn is a term we use when customers stop doing business with us. For example, customers that don't come back for additional goods and services are customers that terminate their subscriptions. We want to understand why they're unhappy and improve what we can from our business operations so that we can reduce churn. And the reverse of churn is what we call retention. We want to retain our customers. This time around, let's try to identify how long it took for our customers to come back and purchase again from us. Was it less than six months? Did they wait more than a year? More than two years? And how many of them did not come back? If you need an LOD Expressions refresher, please check out another comprehensive tutorial I have on this topic. It starts from the basics and goes through the different types of LODs and the implications of the order of operations with LODs. I've also provided a link in the card above and description down below. Let's first look at the details of our customer purchases. Let's drag over customer ID. Let's also display all the dates of their purchases. So right click drag order date right beside customer ID and we're simply going to display the discrete date. Click OK. Let's also calculate the cohort they belong to. This should be the first year that they bought from us. We have discussed this in more detail in part one of the series, so if you need a refresher, please check that out. So on the drop down, create calculated field. Let's call this cohort year. And this is going to be a fixed LOD. We're going to fix this to the customer ID. And this should be the minimum year of their purchase date or minimum year of their order date. So min of year of order date. Let's click OK. Let's move this to dimensions because we want this to be simply a descriptor. So drag that over and let's display this. Let's create one more fixed LOD that captures the first date of purchase. The expression is going to be very similar to our cohort expression. So in this case, create calculated field. Let's call this first purchase date. This is going to be fixed to a customer ID. So fixed, drag over customer ID colon, and this is going to be the minimum of the order date, min order date. Click OK. Let's display this as well. So right click drag first purchase date. Let's display the discrete date. Click OK. So in here we can see that we've captured the first purchase year as well as the first purchase date. Now what we need to explore is when was the next time they purchased from us. So for this particular customer, the next time was September 15. We want to be able to capture that into a different column so that we can calculate how long it took for this customer to come back. We can use a fixed level of detail expression to calculate this. What we need to do is to scan all these dates per customer and get the next date after the first purchase date. Let's create a calculated field. Let's call this second purchase date. So this is going to be a fixed LOD expression, but let's work through the logic first. How do we know the second purchase date? Well, we will know the second purchase date if the date is greater than our first purchase date. So at the core of it is really an if statement. If the order date is greater than our first purchase date. And if this is true, we simply want to output the order date because we know it is greater than or later than our first purchase date. Let's take a look at this. For this particular customer, that's the first purchase date. Therefore, this expression will give us null. This second purchase date is greater than the first purchase date. Therefore, we are going to display this value. But this seems problematic because this is also going to output October 4, March 3, and June 29. When we get a group of these records, all we need to do is to simply pass that to another aggregation, which is required for our level of detail expression anyway. So we're simply going to pass that to another aggregation function called min. So let's complete our expression. We're going to fix this to a customer ID again. So it's still going to be fixed. 
to a customer ID. So drag that over, colon. And what we want is simply the minimum of this group of dates. So we can pass this to a min function. Let's pass the whole thing over. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see everything. And then let's close our parentheses. Actually, I'm just going to move that over so it's a little bit more readable. And let's close our curly brace. Let's click OK and let's see if this is right. So right click, drag, second purchase date. Let's display that. So right now we have our cohort year. First purchase date is the first one that we're seeing in our records. The second purchase date is 915, which is correct. So all that's left for us to do is to calculate how long it took for this customer to come back. To calculate the difference between two dates, we can use a function called date diff, and we can pass in many different units. We can calculate the number of years, the number of quarters, number of months, number of days. For this example, let's just use number of months. So another calculated field, let's create a calculated field here. Let's call this number of months between purchase. And this is simply going to be a date diff. We are looking for the unit month. Our start date is the first purchase date. Our end date is the second purchase date. Let's close this parentheses and let's click on apply. Let's click OK. I'm going to move this to dimensions again because we simply want this to be a tag or a descriptor. So let's take a look at this. Let's display. So it looks like this customer took six months to purchase. Another customer, same thing, six months to purchase. But we have some customers that did not come back right away. This particular customer took 26 months to come back. One more thing I want to do is to group the number of months into specific periods. Perhaps we want to capture less than six months, six to 12 months, 12 to 24 months, and then 24 plus months. There are many different ways of doing this, but I'm going to use the group functionality in Tableau for this example. So let's right click on number of months between purchase, create, group, and in here, I'm going to capture zero to five. Let's group that. Let's call this less than six months. Let us capture six to 12. Let's group that and call that six to 12 months. Let's capture 13 to 24. Let's group that. Let's call that 13 to 24 months. Anything that's over, we're simply just going to say it's 24 plus months. 24 plus months. And for customers who did not come back, it is going to be null because there is not a second purchase date. We're simply going to call this lapsed. Let's click OK. So let's create our viz in a blank worksheet. Let's drag over our cohort. Let's display our duration group. Rearrange this a little bit. Let's rearrange the duration as well. So less than six months has to be the first one. And then let's count the number of customers. Right click, drag customer ID onto our view and let's select count distinct. Let us also add our totals. So under analytics, double click on totals. So we can see in here from our 2018 cohort, there's one customer who did not come back. Majority of them did come back in the less than six months range. For our 2021 cohort, maybe it's a little bit too early, but six of them haven't come back yet. If we wanted to add the percentage, we can simply add our table calculation. So in this case, let's take our measure on the drop down, quick table calculation. Perhaps we want percent of total. Let's change the precision on the drop down format. And in here, just zero decimal places for percentage. Let's close the formatting pane and let's add the original numbers back. I'm going to right click drag customer ID again onto our view, select count distinct again. And I'm just going to rearrange our fields. So I'm going to move measure names before our cohort year. If we want to convert this to a highlight table, we can simply take our measure values, copy that to color and change our mark to square. Control drag onto color, change the mark to a square. And there you go. This answers the question, which customers came back, how long it took for them to come back and how many customers did not come back at all.